Hey guys, my name is Ludia Mungare and welcome to another episode of The Freelancer's Mic where we have conversations with creatives. It's all about you getting the mic and sharing your experiences. If you enjoy it, hit follow so you don't miss the next episode. Uh, on today's podcast, we have uh, an amazing guest. Uh, we are joined by John Moon of Zero Smart. John is an expert productivity coach and a consultant. John helps busy six figure plus entrepreneurs to work less and make more money. So if you're ready to make more money, this episode is definitely a must listen. So John, welcome to the podcast. Me, Thank you. So if someone is listening to this episode right now, and this is the first time they have heard about you, uh, who is John? I have been self-employed pretty much forever. And in that time period, I've run multiple different businesses. I started the world's first brewery to specialize in age now. And I started a social enterprise that does digital education. And we were in 93 countries worldwide. And after a while, I was running these businesses and I felt unfulfilled. The business was making good money, but I didn't have enough time to enjoy them. And so I changed everything. I changed the way that I did everything and I started focusing on my own time activity while keeping the business running efficient and effectively and still making money and after a while people started seeing what i was doing and asking me questions hey how come you're not working all the time you run this business what's going on and people started asking me for help and i helped a few people firstly on a, a pro bono basis friends and friends of friends and i realized i really enjoyed it wow so now, I offer business consulting and coaching because I prefer doing that. I enjoy what I do. So I specialize in helping entrepreneurs make more money and work less while they're doing it. So typically 20 hours a week or less while making at least 100K dollars, and usually, usually up to a million dollars per year working just the 20 hours. So that's what I specialize in now. And I, I really enjoy all my sessions with my clients and I work with some great people. And it's super rewarding watching people go from 70 hours a week from unemployment benefits, for example, and go all the way up to making 300, 400, 500K a year and actually have the time to enjoy them and actually have those just only 20 hours a week working and the rest of the time spending with their family, with friends, or traveling, or whatever it is, I love it. it it's wow. super. So yeah, that's that's me. That's what I do. Wow, I like that statement. You help people work less while making more money. I love that. And so, if you are go, if you were to start again, your business and everything, what is it that you would do differently? That one thing that you would do differently so that you can hit a hundred k or one k a month. Yeah, so this depends on the context of which business we're talking about me starting. Um, when I started my first real business, the brewery, um, I wanted to make everything perfect. I was really keen to do the best job I possibly could on every aspect of the business. And as good as that is, it's a mistake. And it's a mistake I see people make all the time. So with that particular business, I spent tens of hours, weeks and months in some cases on things like branding and design, on naming the business, on creating the best logo I possibly could. And six months into the business, I didn't have any sales. <laughs> I was going, hey, why not? My branding's great. My logo is awesome. The name is really good. Why, why haven't people just knocked down my door to buy from me? And if I started that business again, um, the thing I would tell myself is scrap all of that. The name isn't important. The logo isn't important. The branding's important a little bit. But the, the, the real thing that's important is go out and sell, sell the product. You know, <laughs> go out and do, do the work that makes a difference. So with that business, that's what I'll do different. However, it builds into my 
overall point, regardless of which business I would start, I think knowing that I should have focused more on selling comes down to knowing what I spend my time doing. And that's applicable to every business I've ever worked with, worked in, is if I know how I spend my time, I know what works and I know what doesn't. And I know whether it makes sense to spend my time doing this thing. If I spend 40 hours a week on choosing a name for the business, that probably isn't the most effective use of my time. But if I spend 30 hours a week replying to customer emails, that also probably isn't the most effective use of my time. So the absolute fundamental thing, one thing I'd be really keen to change is track my time. Whenever I start a business now, one of the first things I do with all businesses I work with who come to me for, for advice for their business is we look into how they spend their time. We track their time, how many hours they spend, what do they spend those hours doing? And then we explore, okay, what is the most efficient things we can do? What things can we get rid of? And what things should we do more, more of? So if I was to start again, that's how I'd start. I would start by tracking my time from, from the outset, knowing what I spend my time doing and being proactive, having a plan for what I'm supposed to spend my time doing hour by hour. That wow. doesn't mean I have to stick with it rigidly like a, like a monk or a nun <laughs> or something like that, but it does mean that I need to know what I spend my time doing and to be as close to what I want to spend my time doing as possible. Wow. I like your response uh, because some sometimes people find themselves focusing on creating the brand, uh, creating the logo, uh, searching for the slogan, searching for the name of the business without going out there to sell themselves. So you, you realize at the end of the day, you've spent a lot of time doing the research rather than going out there to say, this is what I want to sell to you. So I think that's a good boy point. And do you think every business should have a logo or a business plan? Like, for example, you're talking about freelancers. Do you think they should have a logo and a business plan? I think it depends. So a logo can really help the founder with a sense of identity for the business. A lot of founders think that a logo is necessary. Your customers, they don't care. Most of them will never see or remember you even have. It doesn't matter to them. They care that you can solve them. Um, logos can be useful, but broadly, they don't really matter. Now, business plans, I am very strongly against writing a 50-page business plan. <laughs> I don't like that. People spend way too much time planning and doing the research just like you said but not taking any action so it's good to have an idea of what you're doing it's good to have a strategy and a plan but you don't need a 50 page business plan. you don't need to do that you don't need to have that depth of research you need to know what the next step is and you need to know where you're aiming for. but for anybody that started freelance um, the military phrase of um, plans never survive first contact with the enemy <laughs> definitely come into play. So you might make the best plan in the world, but when you start talking with your customers, if they don't like what it is that you've planned, it doesn't mean anything. You know, yes. so every freelancer I've ever met starts with one thing in mind and a month later it's slightly different and a month after that is slightly different and six months after that is it's adapted again. The market moves. Customers want different things. We never know exactly. It doesn't matter how much research you do. You can never know 100%. So it's better to get out there and to speak with customers and get started. And you get a better understanding of what you can do and what you need to do to be successful. So business plans, not for me. I think you need a one-page, back-of-the-envelope type plan and then just get out there, get started. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, 
Uh, talking about working less and making good money, uh, what advice would you give someone that thinks I need to work for so many hours for me to make good money? Uh, this is usually a problem with understanding what creates money. So a lot of people charge for their time when they first start, especially as a freelance. People will charge you X dollars per hour, for example. Now, time is an input and is one of your costs. Okay. It's, it's not something that creates money. If you, okay, okay, let me take a step back. Um, if I give, this is something that I share with clients sometimes and I, I shared on LinkedIn as well. If I am in talks with Coca Cola, the massive drink. And I give them a piece of advice that saves them $100 million a year. Okay. It only took me 30 seconds to give them that piece of advice. It was a passing comment. Is that piece of advice only worth 50 cents or a dollar? Because it only took me 30 seconds to give the piece of advice. No, <laughs> it's not. It's probably worth millions of dollars because it saved them $100 million. Most freelancers price based on inputs. So based on how much time they put into things, your audience doesn't care. The The customer doesn't care about inputs. What they care about is what they get out at the end. So for a lot of freelancers, an absolutely key piece of advice is price based on the value that you provide. So figure out what it is your customer wants, figure out how you can give that and what results you can promise and price based on those results rather than based on your time. And then you want to take the next step and say, okay, when you've, as as I said earlier, track your time, you can see, hey, it takes me this many hours to deliver this value. What parts of this time that makes me deliver this value, what parts can I change or make more efficient? So you want to decouple your time with the value you provide. They're different things and it comes down to your offer. Wow. And what's the best way for someone to make money, more money while working less? Because I know there's so many uh, tasks out there we can do that can make us money. But the question, the common question that I usually get is that, which is that niche that really pays well, that I can work less hours and get good money? Usually when people think about making more money, they think about doing so adding more things into their offer or marketing in a new place or doing this new thing, this other thing that they think they shouldn't do for whatever reason. They always think about doing that. In my experience, usually when you're in this position, not always, but usually if you want to make more money, you should do less. Now that sounds counterintuitive, but a lot of small businesses, um, they market everywhere. They've got an Instagram, a Facebook, a TikTok, a Twitter, a YouTube. They do emails. They contact customers. They do everything. And if you look at any big business, they normally have an entire team of people to run even one channel. They will have a team of 10 people that run just Twitter. Yeah. Or they've got a team of five people that run just Instagram. You are one person. You cannot compete with those guys. They, they've got a whole team, very experienced, smart people running just one platform. And you're trying to run four or five platforms? It's not going to happen. Yeah? In my experience, you look at your time and you look at the things that are working and you look at the things that you enjoy. What, what parts of this business do you feel energized when you do this? And you want to get rid of everything else. Get rid of the things that aren't working. Get rid of the things that you don't enjoy, that you dread doing. And do the things that make a difference. And do less. And you find that when you do those fewer things, but the things that you actually enjoy and the things you're actually good at, by doing fewer things, you do them better. And you actually, you grow much quicker. Because now you've got enough time to focus on doing this properly. And by doing it properly and effectively, it really helps you get more money and not work so many hours and not feel burned out doing all these things because 
you can never compete with these huge teams of people doing each channel. If you find one or two things that you really are good at, you enjoy, you can you can compete very effectively. So rather than having that natural instinct to do more, look at what you're doing at the minute and say, hey, what can I do less of? What can I get rid of? That's usually the easiest way to make more money when you're working less. Now, as a small addition to that, um, a lot of the people spend a lot of time marketing online, trying to get new customers. Most of your money will come from existing customers, past customers. Your attention is more than your acquisition. Now, most small businesses, and especially freelancers, suck at asking for reviews and asking for these are two things you can automate. You don't even have to do it yourself that massively increase the number of customers you get and massively increase your retention, the amount of revenue you produce, and it takes no time. It's it's such an easy win, but most people leave it because they're focused on building a Twitter or an Instagram when really they just need to automate one email one time to just ask every past customer, hey, do you remember that I exist? Do you still want the thing that I do? And <laughs> If you did like what we did together, do you know anybody else would enjoy my services? Like, send them far away. It's such an easy way. And most people just don't do it. So for anybody listening now, that is something that I would implore you. Please, please look into your system for attention. Look into your system for a phone. Spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes right now and set up just a quick email for all past customers Say, hey, do you still do you still want my services? Do you still remember that I exist? It makes such a difference. Yeah. Uh, I remember like uh, three years ago, I was reaching out to clients and one of the potential leads went to my LinkedIn page. And when he looked at that page, there was no sign of me working with people uh, like him. So he sent me a message and said, uh, you know, I really loved your message. I loved your email that you sent. But when I was trying to check your LinkedIn profile, I didn't see any testimonials. So I was like, okay, I've worked with a lot of people, but I've never requested for testimonials. You would have worked with loads of people that would have been more than happy to give you a good testimony. They're not going to go out of their way to do it. You just need yeah. to ask. Most people are happy. You just need to ask. And with that client, you want to tell them where to find a testimony. When you remind them that you exist, tell them where to go next. Um, I have a client I've been working with for a couple of months now, and he's in the US, and he's doing all right. He runs a, a content agency. He's doing two or three hundred thousand dollars per year, give or take, before he worked with me. And we had a look at his time, and we restructured his office slightly. But before we did any marketing, any other marketing, all we did was send an email to every person he's ever worked with before and say, hi, I do this thing now. Do you want to buy this? Wow. And we, within within three weeks, we had eight new customers and he had a $60,000 retainer sign. Wow. So he went from earning 300K a year. He was, earning more than, he was on track to earn more than 500K a year within three weeks. And it was just, we just emailed everyone he worked with. Before. These people that you've worked with before, they already trust you. They've already worked with you. They've already paid you. They already see the value you can buy. And often, even if they stop working with you because things change, things change again in the future. Just remind them that you exist. Yeah. All of these people <laughs> are very keen to work with you again if they remember that you exist. Oh, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I know uh, when we talk to people, I'm also a trainer, so when I talk to people, I usually tell them about their mindset. So how important is mindset uh, when it comes to transitioning from a mindset of hustling long hours to one focused on productivity and efficiency within a shorter work schedule. Mindset is by far the hardest thing to change, in my opinion, and it takes time. I am yet to see anybody that's been able to significantly change their mindset without professional help. Um, I very strongly, working with, very strongly recommend working with somebody that has the mindset that you want to get, but also knows how to help you build that mindset. It makes a very, very significant difference. Um, when you 
or in a place where you have limited resources, limited money or limited time, it's very hard to think with abundance in inverted commas uh, and act as though you don't have those. And the problem is, is even if you get to a point where now you do have a lot of money, your feelings probably haven't caught up with your facts. So even if you can afford to pay somebody to do X task, it usually feels very uncomfortable at first to do those kinds of things. And you put it off, put it off, put it off. And it stops you from being able to. So having somebody external, experienced and trusted who can look at your situation and say, hey, I think it's time we hire this person. I think it's time we do this thing. Makes a makes a really big difference. And there is a huge mindset difference between being a freelancer employee and being a business owner. There's the way that you value time is totally different. And as a business owner, you think a lot more about opportunity cost. So to put that into context, if I charge $100 an hour, as an example, and I have a task, let's say marketing, that I can pay somebody $30 an hour to do, a business owner will see that and say, I lose $70 an hour by doing that task myself. A freelancer would probably say it costs $30 an hour. A business owner would say it costs $70 an hour because you're doing a marketing task that you can pay somebody else $30 to do. That's, there's a big difference between those two. And it frees you up to do tasks that really make a difference that you're uniquely qualified to do or tasks that have higher leverage, tasks that you can earn by doing. So yeah, mindset is everything. It takes a long time to get there. And it takes experienced help to help you get there usually. But there are things you can do on the way. Yeah, and to my last question, uh, now that we are speaking about making more and working less, so let's call it like a summary. So what are the five things that I need to do to make more money and as I work less? I think I've mentioned a, a few of the core things in already. But I'll, I'll summarize. My number one favorite key point, if you want to make more money and work less, track your time. Know what you spend your time doing. Analyze which things are worth it and which things are Do more of the stuff that really helps and do less of everything else. That's number one. Track your time. Know what you're spending. Your most important resource. Know how your time. Know what you spend your time doing. Number one. Number two would be reduce reduce what you do. Yeah. So do less. You don't need to work 50, 60 hours a week. It's, it's, it's not necessary. You can achieve more by working less. You're normally more well rested. And so you're better able to focus. You're normally more focused on tasks that make a difference when you work less. There's um, a Parkinson's law of work expands to fill the time made available. If you have 50, 60, 70 hours a week that you're letting your business work, you will work that long. But if you only have 20 hours a week, you start to say, hey, I really need to make sure in those 20 hours I'm doing things that make a difference. So by doing less, you actually achieve. Number three would be look into your systems. A lot of people have no idea what systems exist in their business. First step, write down what systems currently exist in the business. The second step is to say, hey, what would a five-star experience look like for my client? What would be, from their perspective, what would make them go, wow, that was wonderful. That was so good. When you know that, you can start to say, hey, I need to build out this system. I need to build out an onboard, or I need to build out a referral system, or whatever it is. Each of them takes time. But if you just do even one hour a week on building those systems, your business will grow much more quickly and your customers will love you because it would just you will be so much better than everybody else. Nobody else does. So they would be my, my three top things. Number four 
would be to look into outsourcing and to not be afraid of taking a risk on things. It, a lot of people outsource far too late. They they start delegating too late. Even as a, a freelancer, even if you're only earning, let's say, $10,000 a year, $28,000 a year, you can still outsource some of this stuff. You can still automate. You can still get a VA that can help you with just a few hours. Um, one of my clients uh, about nine months ago felt slammed with her business. She was super busy. It was very stressful. And it started impacting um, her results. Her clients weren't as happy because she was going into sessions stressed. And when we looked into that, it was her house was messy because she was working. The kids were always making things like this. And it was, okay, well, why don't you get a clean? You know, it's, you can afford it. Why don't we just get a clean? And it hadn't occurred to her that that was an okay thing to do. So we got the cleaner in, we outsourced that home task, and it massively improved the business. Those two things aren't always separable because the weight of the, the mental weight of the cleaning was weighing on, on her, preventing her from, from performing in a business. So look into, look into outsource. That would be number four. Number five would be seek um, a third party to give you an external perspective. When you run a business, it is very difficult to see the, the full picture because you're in the business, you're in the trenches. So, and there'll be absolutely ridiculously easy things you can do to make things better, but you can't see it because you're too close. But somebody else external can see it and can say, hey, that's a really easy win. Why don't you do that? Yeah. And you're like, oh, <laughs> silly me of course of course i should have done that yeah everybody does it i still do it with my own businesses like everybody does it it's just really hard to see things that are immediately in front of you and getting that that independent perspective makes a massive difference uh, one of my clients recently he runs a e-commerce store in the u.s uh, selling paragliding equipment and I only started working with him uh, maybe two months ago. And he was spending 60, 70 hours a week in the business. First thing we did was look into how he's spending his time. And he was spending about 20 to 30 hours a week hacking his product to send. Wow. <laughs> and now for me, I said, why don't you just get a third party logistics company? Why don't you get a 3PL or somebody else to pack and send this stuff? And he was like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, why am I doing this? And it's, he'd already always done it like that. But when I said it, it was, oh, of course. Like, that's so obvious. But he hadn't seen it. And he'd been running this company for 15 years. It's a successful company, making 500K plus a year. And it was as a third person just coming in saying, yeah, that's why don't you do that? It's, it's saved him 25 hours a week within half an hour of our first call. You know, just because I was a, a third perspective. I was an external perspective and I could see it. So yeah, my fifth tip, regardless of which business you run, find somebody experienced that knows something about business and get that independent perspective. It makes a big difference. Wow. That was so detailed. I like it. And now that you have come to the end of this episode, if someone wants to reach out to you, maybe to seek help, to talk to you about something related to coaching and so many other things, how does that person get to you? Yeah, so um, I'm very happy to answer questions and I'm here to help. So just send me an email, even if it's just to say, hey, I do this thing. Oh, I'm here to you can email me at john at John J D Mun. Mun is M-U-N-N. -N. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. So I, I post regularly on LinkedIn as well. It's just John J.D. Mun. Oh, um, and I also uh, write a weekly newsletter. Uh, I'll send so you a I always also someone. write a weekly newsletter called Work Smart Wednesday, where I include three actionable tips to help you work less and earn. 
that's just work smart wednesday so yeah i'll send you everything over you can include it in the show notes but yeah check me out and i'm very happy to answer questions and provide a couple of free tips here and there just to help you out so yeah you can find me johnjdmun.com and everything else is linked on there okay uh, thank you so much, John, for joining us on this episode of The Freelancers. Mike, we appreciate you for taking time off your busy schedule to uh, share these amazing insights with our audience. Have a great evening. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Freelancers, Mike. And if you want to get in touch, you can find all the information about him on the description. If you want to listen to all other episodes of The Freelancers, Mike, go to our website, writerspire.com slash podcasts. Or you can go to other podcast streaming platforms and search for The Freelancers, Mike. Thank you. Talk to you soon.